Hi everyone, welcome back to OCA with you today for Breeding British Birds episode 12. It's been a couple of weeks since we was last here in the bird room, so today we're gonna to have a tour around. We're gonna talk about what's been going on, some really exciting news and plenty of developments as well. Starting over here on this far wall then, in focus we have a pair of twites. Now, if you think back to last season, we had an unbelievably poor season with them. From one pair, we had 18 eggs, of which 17 were infertile, and we only produced one chick. So that was very frustrating, but thankfully, this year has been a somewhat successful year with them. So about six weeks ago now, they had three chicks, hatch out all three of those chicks made it to fledging and now all three of those chicks are independent they're feeding themselves they're drinking fine they're flying about completely fine so we can now wean those chicks off which i'm quite pleased with the only thing is i've decided not to just wean them off just yet i probably will within the next week or so just because they're an important species i want to try and grow a small stud off here and i just don't want to risk losing them so they're quite happy and settled here at the moment they're not bothering their parents so i'm not going to rush them what's a really good piece of news however with this pair is at the back there in that plastic nest site the hen has returned to nest she's rebuilt up and she's laid the second egg today so that's really good news you might be thinking well it's mid Ju july now is it a bit late and usually i would say yes for a lot of species but because this pair of twites started around the beginning of june it was a late start for them therefore they can carry on they're not as worn out as some other pairs that at this point might have had their third round now as bird breeders we're always planning for the season ahead we're always taking into account certain things that could affect future seasons whether that be pairings if you're trying to build a competitive stud of exhibition birds maybe that would be canaries budgerigars native finches or whatever it is and that's where this comes in so this year I didn't particularly do a lot of mewling pairs and I did notice that I did think well we've had a lot of pure species so that's why I have made a couple of slight changes so it's the end of the breeding season nearly it's sort of the last couple of weeks where I'll be looking to set any eggs and then everything sort of by the start of August will not be breeding for us so what I've done is down here we have a feeder canary hen that I bred last year and she's been paired with a lightly variegated uh, yellow Norwich canary cockbird. So we've got a bit of a crossbreed going on there. And equally, we've done very similar over here. So here we have a feeder canary hen we bred last year with a green, dark, uh, buff Norwich canary cockbird. So we have two Norwich cross pairs. And the idea of this is we're going to look to try and breed some muling birds for ourselves. So we do actually have one chick in that nest. It's about 10 days old. So that's a half Norwich, half feeder canary. And then down here in this nest site, just at one day old, or maybe not even that, maybe 12 hours old, is a tiny little chick as well. And that's a nearly a clear looking chick. So the idea is that we're gonna get some Norwich cross canaries to mule with. So that could be pairing to a red pole, a goldfinch, something like that. And we're breeding them for ourselves because one, if we can get hens, that's always more ideal than having to buy them in from somewhere else because they're not always cheap. But it means that we can just try and form something that's going to be having those Norwich qualities, those maybe larger heads, larger sizes, extra feather, but it's also going to have the abilities of a feeder canary to ideally feed its own young. So it's kind of a bit of a best of both worlds. We're gonna try it, we're gonna see what happens, but so far, those chicks that we've got are looking good and I'm hoping they can go into some muling attempts next season. I've been breeding lesser red poles for about five or six years now, and I've always found them to be a species that has a surge of success later on in the season and that's exactly what's happened so far so up until the beginning of july we would produced approximately 10 or so red poles well we've pretty much doubled that number in just a few weeks so of our six pairs in this block of cages five of them have all produced young for us with which i'm over the moon about 
This pair up at the top that have yet to breed for us have finally laid an egg, so the first egg just this morning. So really keen to breed off that cock bird. He's a, a very good bird that did well on the show bench for me, so fingers crossed those eggs will be full. But it's actually some others I want to share your attention on. So first off, we have this nest site here. Now it's a, a flighted pair of lesser red poles. Uh, it's a, two birds that I've bred for me previously, but not as a pair. They have been getting on really well. A couple of weeks back, they produced us five youngsters that we weaned off and went into the young bird shed. And now they have done the exact same. We have five baby red poles in the nest site at about eight days old. I rung them a few days ago and they're looking really good. So I'm really pleased to report that news. Again, both birds I'm keen to breed off and they've done just that for us. Down here, we've had a bit of a, a, an interesting one. It's weird. So this pair, about six to eight weeks ago, laid some eggs, one youngster hatched and they reared a single chick. And they've done the exact same. So we now have a chick in there at about 10 days old, only one, and they've reared it good. So we have got youngsters off them, which is great. It's just weird that they've only reared one, but it's one more added to the tally, nevertheless, which is great. And then for the other pairs here, so we have uh, probably about seven or eight youngsters between these two pairs here. They are now about four weeks old, so they're time to be weaned off as well. They're feeding themselves now completely fine, and both hens are back on eggs. So I'm hoping those eggs will be full, but some really good news from all of the pairs, and I'm hoping that success will continue throughout July. I've always been one for experimenting with birds, trying new things to help and better my understanding of them. And I have a real interest in bird behavior and stuff like that. So what I've tried here is lesser red poles in the wild will generally colony breed. You'll have a one male covering multiple females and they'll all nest in a, a community environment. Well, I decided four weeks ago to try all that. So I kept a couple of birds spare at the beginning of the breeding season that I would have otherwise moved on just in case we lost anything this season. And we have had some success with that. So down here in this nest site, we have a lesser red pole hen and she's sharing the aviary with a, another lesser red pole hen, a lesser red pole cockbird, and actually a pair of siskin mules. She has four youngsters underneath her, all at five days old now. They're being reared by every single bird in the flight, which is a new sort of experience for me. I've never seen that really happen before, but all five birds in that aviary are rearing those chicks, so they are never going hungry. Their crops are always full. So it's a bit of an interesting one. So this is a six foot long flight cage, and it's worked absolutely perfect for them, to be quite honest with you. So really pleased with that. And if you have a quick look, you can actually see there is no cover around that nest site whatsoever and it is a native bird obviously captive bred so a bit of an interesting one really never never tried it before but it has been a success so it might be one that we'll try in future seasons in colony breeding small birds like the lesser red poles You might be wondering how are our other native birds getting on this breeding season. So obviously it's mid-July now. It's sort of the last couple of weeks where I'll be looking to set eggs under birds and some of them I've already retired for the season where I've just said we won't be allowing them to breed because they've either reared some more chicks earlier, had an earlier start and I just don't want them to uh, get too tired and obviously lose them because their breeding is a natural instinct and uh, it's just something you have to maintain and control. So beginning with our whole finches then, they had two youngsters, we weaned them off in last week's episode. They're over in the young bird room now. I think they might go back to nest, you know. It's, it's an interesting one because I've never bred them before and some people say you can double clutch them, others say you can't, they're a single clutch bird. But I'm happy we've bred two youngsters off them. The hen has been carrying material, but I think it's probably the end of the season for her. We have my best pair of green finches in here. They have five chicks that are about a month, five, six weeks old now, something like that. They are 100% ready to be weaned, but they're getting on well. 
I don't know if the parents are going to go back to nest and both of the parent birds are extremely important birds to me from both a sentimental value as they've done a lot of winning for me on the show bench and also breeders so we'll see what they do but I might just leave them now to go into a molt fairly soon. We've of course got a pair of Siberian bullfinches just a weird season with them once again they've they've produced as eggs they've not laid as full clutches we've had full eggs off them their eggs have failed to hatch it's been quite a pain to be honest with you so there's a couple of eggs i think two or three that i've popped under a canary down here they might be fertile we might get some chicks off them they might not i'm not sure we have got a pair of new color green finches down there so it's actually two visually normal birds the cock bird is a dominant yellow as it's called and he's split i think isabel pastel and something else so we'll see what happens with them but they're on six eggs in that far corner so i'm hoping those eggs will be full we've got two pairs of greenies up here one has gone back to nest we'll see if those eggs are full i'm happy to breed off them the other pair at the top have looked like they might rebuild but the hen's looking a little bit tired so i'm probably just going to let them uh, sort of see it out for the end of the season now and they'll start molting and then obviously you've seen the lesser red poles but down here we do have a hybrid pair so we have a native goldfinch cockbird with a lesser red pole hen she's laid the fourth egg of her third clutch today so here's to hoping that they're full it would be nice to produce a couple of goldie red pole hybrids for this season but if we don't there's always next year Anyway, everyone, that's all from OC Avery for this week's episode. If you'd like to see more, please make sure to smash a like on this video, subscribe down below so you don't miss any more future content. Follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok for daily updates and behind the scenes footage of all of our birds. Now, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.